a man of faith who became a priest, preacher, and had a significant influence on the lives of several popes. He was devoted to the Virgin Mary and the Rosary. Today's curiosities are about St. Louis Marie Grignion of Montfort. Here are 10 curiosities about him. 10. Brief Biography St. Louis Marie Grignion of Montfort, an influential Catholic priest, lived during the late 17th and early 18th centuries. Born on January 31, 1673, in the small town of montfort sur mayeu France, he came into the world in a devoutly Catholic family. From an early age, he demonstrated a deep inclination towards religious life, aspiring to the priesthood in his youth. At 27 years old, after rigorous academic and spiritual training, St. Louis was ordained a priest. During his education, especially while at the Seminary of St. Sulpice in Paris, he stood out for his intellectual ability and dedication to his studies. As the seminary librarian, he had the opportunity to read extensively about Our Lady, which profoundly influenced his spirituality and doctrine. St. Louis Marie Grignion of Montfort is particularly known for his fervent devotion to the Virgin Mary and for being a zealous preacher of this devotion. His writings, such as, True Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, The Secret of Mary, and The Secret of the Rosary, are considered masterpieces of Mariology and have significantly influenced Marian theology in the Catholic Church. He advocated that total consecration to Mary was the surest and most effective way to reach Jesus Christ. During his 16 years of priesthood, St. Louis achieved remarkable feats, preaching popular missions in various dioceses of France. He dreamed of forming a group of poor missionary priests dedicated to preaching and converting souls. His sermons were powerful and deeply touched people's hearts, often leading to mass conversions and spiritual renewal of communities. Despite facing many adversities, including opposition from within the clergy and ambushes, he continued his mission with courage and determination. His health was weakened by poisoning, but he continued to preach and work tirelessly until his death on April 28, 1716, at the age of 43. The influence of St. Louis extended far beyond his life. Popes like Leo XIII, St. Pius X, Pius XII, and St. John Paul II were profoundly impacted by his teachings. He was beatified on January 20, 1888, by Pope Leo XIII and canonized on July 20, 1947, by Pope Pius XII. His liturgical feast is celebrated on April 28. St. Louis Marie Grignion of Montfort is a shining example of holiness and dedication to the service of God and Our Lady, leaving a lasting legacy in the history of the Catholic Church. If you are not yet subscribed to our channel, subscribe so you don't miss any curiosities about the saints. 9. Education and Training St. Louis of Montfort stood out from a young age for his great intellectual ability and dedication to studies, characteristics that shaped his future mission and legacy in the Catholic Church. His educational journey and spiritual formation began early when he joined the Jesuit College in Rennes, where he received a solid academic and religious education. Recognizing his priestly vocation, St. Louis Marie was sent to Paris to continue his theological studies at the renowned seminary of St. Sulpice. This seminary was known for its academic and spiritual rigor, providing comprehensive training for future priests. During his time at St. Sulpice, Grignion of Montfort proved to be an exceptional student, standing out not only for his intellect but also for his deep piety and devotion. While at the seminary, St. Louis Marie was appointed librarian, a position of great responsibility and privilege. This role gave him access to a vast collection of theological books and writings, which he studied with great enthusiasm. It was during this period that he deepened his knowledge and devotion to the Virgin Mary, reading extensively about Mariology and the teachings of the Church Fathers on the Mother of God. This immersion in Marian literature was crucial for the development of his spirituality and his future works. The experience as a librarian not only broadened his intellectual horizons but also strengthened his conviction in the importance of devotion to Our Lady. He firmly believed that Mary was the safest path to Jesus Christ and to the salvation of souls. This conviction was the foundation of his most influential writings, such as, True Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and, The Secret of Mary, which continue to be important references in Catholic spirituality. In addition to his academic training, St. Louis Marie Grignion of Montfort also received deep spiritual formation. 
He was known for his ascetic practices and intense prayer life. His dedication to the spiritual life was evident in his way of living and in the missions he undertook later as a priest. 8. Papal Influence The doctrine of St. Louis of Montfort has exerted significant influence over several popes throughout the centuries, demonstrating the depth and durability of his impact on the Catholic Church. His Marian spirituality and emphasis on total consecration to Mary left an indelible mark on papal teaching. Pope Leo XIII, known as the Pope of the Rosary, was deeply inspired by Grignion of Montfort's teachings. Leo XIII wrote several encyclicals on the Rosary, such as Supremi Apostolatus Officio, 1883, and Laetitiae Sancti, 1893, in which he exhorted the faithful to practice Marian devotion and the recitation of the Rosary, a central practice in Montfort's spirituality. Leo XIII saw devotion to the Rosary as a powerful means of spiritual strengthening and protection against the evils of the world, echoing Montfort's emphasis on the powerful intercession of Our Lady. Saint Pius X, one of the most Marian devout popes, was also deeply influenced by Grignion of Montfort's spirituality. He approved and encouraged the practice of total consecration to Mary, as taught by Montfort, recognizing its importance for the spiritual life of the faithful. Pius X even granted indulgences to those who practiced this consecration, demonstrating his support and official validation of Montfort's teachings. Pope Pius XII, in his encyclical Fulgens Corona, 1953, on the occasion of the Marian year, referred to the importance of Marian devotion in Christian life. Although he did not directly cite Grignion of Montfort, the influence of his Marian spirituality is perceptible in Pius XII's reflections on the central role of Mary in salvation and in the life of the faithful. Pius XII also canonized St. Louis Marie Grignion of Montfort in 1947, officially recognizing his holiness and the relevance of his teachings for the Church. Grignion of Montfort's influence reached its peak with Pope St. John Paul II, whose Marian devotion was central to his pontificate. John Paul II adopted the motto, Totus Tus, All Yours, directly inspired by Montfort's consecration formula, reflected in his, true devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Polish Pope frequently cited Grignion of Montfort in his writings and speeches and believed that total consecration to Mary was a safe and effective way to reach Jesus. In his encyclical, Redemptoris Mater, 1987, John Paul II highlighted the importance of Marian devotion, reflecting the enduring influence of Montfort in his personal spirituality and papal teaching. Leave your prayer request in the comments, so that St. Louis of Montfort may intercede for it before God. 7. Devoted to Our Lady. St. Louis of Montfort is widely recognized for his intense devotion to Our Lady, the Virgin Mary, a central aspect of his spirituality and ministry. His dedication to the Mother of God not only shaped his personal life and writings but also profoundly influenced the spirituality of many faithful, including popes like St. John Paul II. True devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary is Grignion of Montfort's best-known work and one of the most important texts on Marian spirituality in the Catholic Church. In this treatise, Montfort outlines the practice of total consecration to Jesus through Mary, presenting a form of devotion that involves complete self-surrender to the Virgin Mary as a means of uniting more deeply with Jesus Christ. Montfort describes this consecration as an easy, short, perfect, and secure way to arrive at union with our Lord. He argues that by totally giving oneself to Mary, the faithful are more perfectly conformed to the will of God, since Mary, in her perfection and holiness, leads safely and effectively to Christ. Marian devotion according to Grignion of Montfort is characterized by several fundamental principles. Complete and unconditional surrender to Mary, including all actions, prayers, sufferings, and merits, for her to use according to the divine will. Recognizing Mary as the mediatrix of all graces and fully trusting in her intercession. Striving to imitate Mary's virtues, especially her humility, purity, and love of God. Maintaining an active spiritual life centered on prayer, especially the rosary, and frequent reception of the sacraments, with a special devotion to the blessed sacrament of the Eucharist. 6. Missions in France. St. Louis of Montfort, initially planning to be a missionary abroad, ended up dedicating his life to missionary work in his homeland, France. 
He was convinced to stay in the country, where his fervor and dedication had a significant impact on the regions of Brittany and Vade. Montfort's missions were characterized by great popular enthusiasm and contributed to the spiritual revitalization of these areas. After being ordained a priest in 1700, Montfort ardently desired to pursue a missionary life outside France, inspired by a desire to bring the gospel to foreign lands. However, his superiors and spiritual advisors convinced him that his calling would be more effectively realized in his own country, where the need for spiritual renewal was pressing. France, at the turn of the 18th century, was amidst religious and social challenges that required zealous and dedicated missionaries like Montfort. Montfort dedicated himself to preaching popular missions in the regions of Brittany and Vade. These missions consisted of intensive periods of preaching, catechesis, Eucharist, and confessions, lasting weeks or even months. He traveled from town to town, often on foot, preaching to people in churches, squares, and even in fields. Montfort was known for his eloquent and passionate oratory, which attracted large crowds. He used visual and dramatic methods to convey his messages, such as building large crosses and organizing religious processions to capture the people's attention and hearts. His missions aimed at a profound renewal of the spiritual life of communities. He emphasized the importance of the sacraments, especially confession and the Eucharist, and promoted devotion to the Rosary and the Virgin Mary, central themes in his spirituality. To ensure the continuity of his missionary efforts, Montfort founded two religious congregations, the Missionaries of the Company of Mary, the Montfortians, and the Daughters of Wisdom, both dedicated to evangelization and Christian education. 5. The Great Calvary. St. Louis of Montfort, with his missionary fervor and passionate devotion, envisioned the construction of a great Calvary in France, a monumental expression of his faith and a focal point for the spiritual renewal of local communities. He envisioned this Calvary as a symbol of worship and a means to draw the faithful to meditate on the Passion of Christ. To realize this ambitious project, Montfort enlisted the help of local workers who shared his enthusiasm and devotion. The undertaking began to take shape, uniting the community around a common spiritual purpose. The construction of the Calvary was not just a physical work but also an act of faith, involving sacrifice and dedication from all involved. However, the construction of the Great Calvary faced serious difficulties. The Jansenists, an influential group that upheld a rigorous theology often conflicting with the Catholic orthodoxy defended by Montfort, saw him as a threat to their teachings and influence. They decided to slander him, making accusations and spreading rumors that tarnished his reputation and the public perception of his work. The slanders of the Jansenists reached the ears of the authorities, culminating in the intervention of the king. The project, which had progressed with much effort and dedication, was abruptly halted. The royal order to cease the construction of the Calvary was a severe blow to Montfort and all those who had invested time, faith, and resources in realizing this spiritual dream. Despite the significant setback, Montfort did not let himself be discouraged. His resilience and unwavering faith kept him firm in his mission of evangelization and Marian devotion. He continued to preach, write, and inspire others to follow the path of true devotion to Our Lady, leaving a legacy that overcame the difficulties and adversities of his time. 4. Efficacy in Preaching St. Louis of Montfort was known for his efficacy in preaching, a skill that resulted in numerous mass conversions throughout his life. His missionary zeal and his ability to touch the hearts of his listeners were remarkable. Montfort could convey the truths of the gospel with a clarity and fervor that left a lasting impression on all who heard him. A striking example of the effectiveness of his preaching occurred when he had the opportunity to preach to an army. Faced with soldiers accustomed to the harshness and brutality of war, Montfort spoke with such deep conviction that he managed to penetrate the emotional and spiritual barriers of the military. His speech, full of passion and sincerity, addressed themes of repentance and penance, evoking divine mercy and the need for reconciliation with God. The result was extraordinary. Touched by Montfort's message, the troops responded with genuine repentance, many confessing and adopting practices of public penance. This episode is a powerful testimony to the impact he had as a preacher, capable of transforming hearts even in seemingly insensitive circumstances. Montfort's preaching was not limited to theoretical or superficial sermons. 
He sought authentic and lasting conversion, encouraging people to live a life of true devotion and commitment to the Christian faith. His approach involved a call to action and a change of life that went beyond words and manifested in concrete acts of faith and charity. 3. Adversities and Persecutions St. Louis of Montfort faced a series of adversities and persecutions throughout his life, but his determination and commitment to his mission remained unwavering. From the beginning of his journey as a priest, he encountered resistance and opposition from various sources, yet this did not deter him from continuing his work. One of the most striking adversities was being the target of poisoning attempts and ambushes. These attacks, motivated by various reasons, were attempts to silence his voice and undermine his influence. However, Montfort stood firm in his faith and determined in his mission, refusing to be intimidated or diverted from his purpose. Even in the face of these life-threatening threats, he did not back down. On the contrary, his courage and resilience seemed to grow as he faced each new challenge. Montfort was fully aware of the risks he faced, but his trust in God and his devotion to Our Lady gave him the strength to keep moving forward, regardless of the adverse circumstances. 2. Impact on the French Revolution The work of St. Louis of Montfort in the Vade region had a profound and lasting impact that reverberated even after his death, especially during one of the most tumultuous periods in French history, the French Revolution. His spiritual and pastoral influence left such a significant legacy of faith that it greatly contributed to the fervent resistance of this region against revolutionary changes. The Vade region, known for its strong Catholic devotion, tenaciously resisted the revolutionary ideas that sought to abolish religion and institute a new political regime. The people of the Vade, rooted in Catholic traditions and inspired by Montfort's missionary work, stood firm in their resistance, even in the face of devastating consequences. The deeply rooted faith in the Vade community, nurtured by Montfort's preaching and example, became a bastion against revolutionary ideals that sought to undermine traditional and religious values. This religious fervor and sense of Catholic identity were crucial elements in the Vade's determination to resist the French Revolution. The Vade's resistance to the French Revolution was not without cost. The region witnessed great bloodshed and suffered terrible reprisals from revolutionary forces. 1. Spiritual Legacy The spiritual legacy of St. Louis Marie Grignion of Montfort is deeply marked by his devotion and teachings on total consecration to the Virgin Mary. He emphasized that this act of consecration was an effective way to draw closer to Christ and grow in spiritual life. His Marian spirituality not only resonated in his own life and teachings but also profoundly influenced the spirituality of many others, including St. John Paul II. Montfort's spiritual legacy remains alive today, inspiring countless faithful to consecrate themselves to Our Lady and find in her intercession a source of strength, protection, and assistance in their spiritual journey. His emphasis on total consecration to the Virgin Mary as a path to Christ remains a powerful testament to the importance of Marian devotion in the spiritual life of Catholics. And so we come to the end of another story full of curiosities. Don't forget to leave in the comments which saints' curiosities you would like to see here on the channel. See you in the next story.